if you analyze data with pandas, then you are almost certainly using the group by method. But I see people using group by incorrectly all the time. And in this video, I'm going to point to a bunch of the mistakes that I see people making and help you avoid those. So the first thing I'm going to do is say import pandas as PD. I'm going to say df equals PD read CSV taxi.csv. And this is just a, a data set that I really enjoy working with. I've been using it for years. It's about 10,000 taxi rides from New York City from 2015. And we see here the vendor ID, which is like who made the, uh, um, the computer in the system and the taxi, passenger count, trip distance and miles, where they were picked up, when they were picked up, how much they paid, how much they tipped, and so on and so forth. So the number one a uh, mistake that I see people make, or the first mistake I see people make, is forgetting to aggregate. And so if I say here, df group by passenger count, trip distance, dot mean, what am I really saying here? I'm saying for every distinct value of passenger count, calculate the mean trip distance, right? So this is basically a categorical column or one we're treating as categorical. This is trip distance. It's a value column, a numeric column. And here we have mean. Mean basically says, I want to calculate the mean. And sure enough, it works just great and we get the results. But what if I take this same thing and I don't run dot mean? I then get back this group by object and people all the time are like in my classes, what's going on here? Why did I get this group by object? And the answer is that's what group by gives you back. And only when you apply apply an aggregation method such as mean, will you actually get a result? So it comes back really quickly, but it's not actually doing anything. Uh, I'll say that there's also a sort of the flip side of this is if I don't include any columns in the square brackets, if I just say df group by passenger count dot mean, if I do that, then the assumption is that we want to apply mean to every single column. Now, there are two problems with this. Number one is almost certainly you don't want to do that. You don't want to spend the time and the memory calculating that. Number two is if, as I have here, some of the columns are not numeric, then running mean is going to give me an error. And the error here says even, hey, you're trying to run the mean method on objects, meaning Python strings. I can't do that. That's not going to work. Now, you won't always get that error. You might just get here, like if I say count. If I say count, yeah, we can actually count how many values there are for each value of passenger count in each column. But the odds that you actually want to calculate this for every single column, pretty darn slim. So don't forget to include an aggregation method. And almost certainly you want to include uh, a column as well. Okay, number two error that I see is ignoring, even number it, sort equals false. So what does this mean? So if I say now, once again, df group by passenger count, and we say trip distance, and then we say dot mean. Look at the results. The results here are passenger count is the index of this series, and it's from zero through six. And that's not an accident. And I'm not talking about the values that we get there in the index. I'm saying that it is sorted from zero through six because that is the default. Now that's very nice. It's aesthetic, it's easier to read. But if you have a large data set, not a tiny one like this with only 10,000 rows, but if you have one with hundreds of thousands or millions of rows, that sorting does take extra time. And so you can always say sort equals false. Oops, uh, passenger count it helps to use a comma, not a period, and there we go. And now you'll see it shows up in whatever order group by decides to put it in. It could be the order in which it found things, it could be an internal order. I really don't know, and it doesn't matter because I told it not to sort, so we're fine. Now, the disadvantage here, of course, is that not only is it a little less aesthetic, but I can't find things as easily. But if you're not looking for the first few values or the last few values, you can always just retrieve them programmatically. You don't actually need to sort them. Um, and in many cases, sorting is, as I said, just a waste of time and memory. Um, by default, sort equals true. So if you like them to be sorted, well, just don't do anything. But that will, of course, take some extra time and memory. Number three is misusing multiple aggression uh, aggregation methods, not aggression methods. That would be very violent. And so what am I talking about? If I once again say group by passenger count drip distance mean, what if I want both mean and standard deviation? Well, it might feel like I could then chain those methods. I'm going to get the mean and then, oh, I'm going to get the standard deviation also. But that is not what we are calculating here. We are now calculating in this particular query the standard deviation that we got from all of those means. That's probably not what you wanted. And instead, what you need to do is say, 
egg. The egg method is all about let me run multiple aggregation methods. And I give it a list. And I can say your mean and standard deviation. Look what I get back. I get back then a data frame. A data frame in which the index continues to be passenger count. Notice it's sorted because I did not say anything about sort equals false. And then each column is a different aggregation method that I ran here. And I can run whatever ones I want. Now, in previous very early versions of Pandas, and you might still see documentation about this online, you could actually specify what aggregation methods you wanted to run on each column. You can no longer do that if you also specify a column here. So if I do now what I just told you, you probably don't want to do, if I get rid of the column, but then in ag, I say, I give it a dictionary. I can say trip distance, I want this list of things, and then let's say total amount, I want to get, let's say, mean and standard deviation and min and max. I can do all those things. And now I close the dictionary. Now I will get a data frame with, once again, passenger count on my index. And my columns will be, it's actually a two-level multi-index on the columns. Trip distance and total amount. And for trip distance, I have these two. And for total amount, I have these four. You cannot also include columns here if you're going to do this, at least not in modern pandas. Um, but this is a nice, flexible way for you to be able to say, I want to calculate these aggregation methods on these columns and those on those columns. But again, it all comes from ag. You don't want to just chain the methods because that's going to give you, uh, well, the wrong answer. Number four is losing NAN categories. So what's going on there? Well, I'm going to make some adjustments right now to my data frame. I'm going to say df lock, and I'm going to say zero and tri well, let's say passenger count equals. And first, I have to say import numpy as np. I'll say np nan. I'm going to do that for the first few. Let's do lock one, two, three, four. Okay. So now the first few rows of my data frame, the passenger count is nan. We don't know how many passengers there were. So now if I say df group by passenger count, trip distance, dot mean. So what I'm saying once again is for every distinct value of passenger count, what was the mean trip distance? And we can see once again, zero through six. But wait a second, what happened to all those NANs? We do have NAN values there. And the fact is that those NANs are removed by default. If we don't want them to be removed, if we want to include NAN values in our categorical you know, uh, values, then we need to say drop NA equals false. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say here passenger count, comma, drop NA equals false. And then you can see that we now have seven results for passenger count. We have zero through six and NAN. And NAN is a value like any other value, except, well, it's just weirder, right? And so basically, this is something you have to do if you want to include NAN. How often are you going to want to include NAN as a categorical for group by purposes? Truth be told, it's useful for some debugging, even if you don't want it in your end result. Okay, and the final thing that people get mixed up on all the time that I find is multiple column grouping. So you can run group by in all sorts of ways. Um, but a good rule of thumb in pandas is if you can specify one column as a string, then you can specify many columns as a list of strings. So watch this. Let's say I want to calculate for each value of passenger count, not only mean trip distance, but also the total amount. How much do they pay? So I give now a list of strings inside the square brackets. We have double square brackets here. And look what I get. For each value of passenger count, I now get both total amount and trip distance, and it works just great. Well, wait a second. If this rule of thumb is accurate, then I can provide not just a list of strings for the values I'm calculating, but also maybe for the categorical. And yeah, I can provide a list here. I'll say vendor ID and passenger count. So now we are saying for every distinct combination of vendor ID and passenger count, get me the mean for both total amount and trip distance. And look at what we get. We get a multi-index on the rows, vendor ID and passenger count. I get a data frame back, and I have both total amount and trip distance. And that works great. And if you're saying, wait a second, what if we want not just mean, but we want mean and uh, uh, standard deviation, I can use, I can say mean and standard deviation. And look at this, now I have like the ultimate analysis of taxi data frame, where we have a vendor ID and passenger count as a multi-index on the rows. And then I have a multi-index on the columns with total amount trip distance at the top and mean and standard deviation inside. 
And so group by is this incredibly powerful method that we use all the time. And I hope that if you were making some of these mistakes before or confused by these things before, you're not anymore. And now you have a larger set of tools you can use for grouping and analyzing. Do you have any more questions about grouping or anything at all in Python and Pandas? Let me know in the columns, give me in the comments, give me feedback. I would love to hear from you. And I'll be back real soon with lots more videos about Python and Pandas and everything in between. See you then.